Hello and welcome back to The Note. Let's divide the world into thirds today. Let's start with what happened in China over the week. Obviously, the uh, boom in A-shares has been one of the big stories of the year. It went into reverse this week. It dropped more than 10%, therefore qualifying as a correction. Can we be sure that the boom in A-shares is over? No, we certainly can't. It's perfectly possible that it will move on further. It would be very helpful, however, if this does indeed turn to be a turning point before the uh, speculative excess gets even more extreme. Now, moving on to the US, we heard from Janet Yellen this week on one of her quarterly press conferences. It was obvious by the time she spoke that we weren't going to get uh, a rate rise in June, as it once seemed possible. She has very much left all options open uh, September, December or March. The critical point I'd like to make about this, I don't think we're really going to get any clear steer from the Fed this side of their next meeting in July and the earliest possible day they can actually move will be September, so little likely development in the next few weeks. If we take a look at this chart though, perhaps we should be worrying about a slightly different question than the one we've all been worried about. Rates that the uh, Fed confer can control have stayed extremely low for a very long time, as we all know. What actually matters more is the long-term rate, the 10-year Treasury rate there. And you can see that the last time the Fed was uh, in a raising cycle, it failed more or less completely to actually push up 10-year rates. Very important for the, the uh, economy as a whole. The uh, gradual approach that um, uh, Janet Yellen appears to be committed to reduces the risk of uh, sudden accidents, reduces the risk of uh, of a renewed recession, arguably, but also increases the risk that the Fed will again find it impossible to push down long-term rates. That's a matter of some concern. Now, on to Europe. We had a last-ditch meeting of European finance ministers over the Greek debt crisis last week, and we have another last-ditch meeting coming up on Monday. What is most interesting, there was an awful lot of uh, commentary and reporting on this elsewhere on FT.com, what is most interesting, perhaps, is how unworried markets are about this. The FTSE Euro First 300 is still up almost 5% for the year, even in dollars. It's given up something, but that is not a sign of great concern. The Euro itself, yes, has weakened significantly, uh, against the dollar for the year as a whole, but it's actually up quite a bit uh, over the last few months. It's roughly where it was when the Greek election took place. This is not consistent with great worry and concern. Broadly, I think what you're seeing is a very confident bet by the market that the can is going to be kicked ahead once more and that there will be no Grexit, no big major event. I agree that that is still, despite all the posturing, by far the most likely outcome. I would be nervous about doing so little to hedge against the risk that it happens. Where we are now is that if there is an accident, or a graxident as we now have to call it, because the markets have done so little to position themselves for it, it would lead to a very hectic week next week, if it were to occur. Most likely scenario, though, continues to be another kick of the can down the road.